And we're back with the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. It's time for us to look at the papers. Uh, we call it here, Off the Press on the Breakfast. And uh, we'll be having Nick Agule join us this morning. Nick, it's good to have you on the line. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so very much. Good morning to our viewers. All right, then uh, let's take a look at the punch. That's what we have. And we'll be looking at other papers as the vendor you know, pleases. Uh, banks battle new Naira shortage ahead of deadline. Uh, it's quite interesting. We've had several excuses. The CBN saying, hey, the banks have refused to come pick up the Naira notes. And now uh, we're hearing reports of, you know, shortage of uh, the new notes, really. PSCs, uh, that's also another one. Ask federal government to stop 10,000 constables' salaries. And uh, that's quite interesting. Petrol may hit 800 naira per liter on subsidy removal. Marketers hint interest rate hike likely as MPC meets today. Don't forget the MFLE saga. And finally, uh, there's going to be an MPC meeting, which MFLE would be. Uh, let's, let's see how all of that pans out. We'll be right here bringing you all of the necessary information. And just before we move away, uh, underneath the board caption, I think I forgot to take that, Lagos, Federal Capital Territory, states ATM dispense all notes at January uh, 31st deadline. Yes, I mean, almost all the ATMs I use, I'm, 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 really, I've never seen any ATM. I'm talking from my experience that has uh, dispensed the new note. The Central Bank of Nigeria begins currency swap for rural and unbanked Nigerians. And uh, stakeholders foresee extension. Customers want CBN to shift grounds. It's very confusing. Passengers stranded in forests as worry. Itakpe train drills. Uh, Nigerians politicians seek relevance in foreign land. Uh, talking about the whole uh, Chatham House is more like a pilgrimage. <laughs> very interesting. And uh, MK Wabiola's wife, Sue's IG, demands 100 billion. These are the headlines you find this morning on The Punch. Let's quickly take some key headlines from Daily Trust. Uh, the big one there, high costs hinder consumers' access to electricity meters. Uh, we have flight delays, uh, theft, top list, as aviation ranks third in FCC PC 2022 complaints. That's a... Uh, former Consumer Complaints Commission. Um, so those will probably be what people have had to complain about. Really sad indeed. Now, uh, we've talked about the worry, Tapi, rail, uh, train derailing. And the final one, diphtheria death toll hits 34, a uh, counter records 100 infections. All right, let's quickly uh, take a look at the leadership newspaper there. The leadership says, 2023 presidency, fake news won't stop tunable APC, Yahya Bello declares, all right, denies withdrawing support for Asiwaju, rivalry with uh, Falake. I hope I got that correctly. PMB leads APC presidential campaign to Bauchi today. I mean, I saw that particular news of Yahya Bello's withdrawal. Uh, one would begin to ask what exactly is going on uh, with the, the news. Sarab drags Buhari to court over electricity tariff hike. And uh, some people say, if you're talking about the removal of uh, electricity tariff, I mean, subsidy, removing subsidy for electricity, uh, what, what do you hope to expect? And others will say, have we been subsidizing electricity? Edo records 10 new cases of Lassa fever and eight deaths. 2023, Kwankwaso will not step down for anyone. NNPP is insisting. Despite renewed peace commitment, Political parties continue much swindling. And uh, passengers stranded at the worry-bound train as it derails in Kogi. Uh, please confirm killing of four persons in Bauchi community. That's it this morning on The Leadership. Let's quickly bring in uh, Nika Guli. Nick, once again, good morning to you. Uh, for me, I think uh, I would like us to start by looking at the issue of Lassa fever. I'm, I'm tired of hearing about Lassa fever. It seems to be like uh, uh, the rainy season and dry season. It has a season of coming, uh, a wash 
uh, on the front pages of the papers. This time, the leadership is telling us that uh, 10 new cases have been recorded in Edo State and 8 deaths. So what's going on, in your opinion? Um, what do you think of this? Thank you very much. And what I think of this is not surprising that, once again, Nigeria is taking her eyes off the ball of what we should be arresting. Uh, this uh, healthcare in Nigeria generally is not being given the attention that it deserves. Elsewhere in the world, the government don't allow two critical sectors of the economy completely into the hands of the private sector. And that is one, education, and two, healthcare. Because governments around the world recognize that these two critical sectors are the ones that are most needed by humanity. And so they are never led to the highest bidder. They are never led to whoever has money to pay for them. The governments actually provide these two key services in most countries, including the developed ones, free of charge, so that all citizens can have access to it. But in Nigeria, these are the two sectors that we give the lowest attention to. If you look at the budgetary provision for education and healthcare in Nigeria, both of them attract less than the equivalent of a billion dollars each. And for 200 million people, it then becomes very clear that the government is not paying due attention to matters of healthcare in Nigeria. And this Lassa fever has become a recurring story that year in, year out, we hear that it comes, it strikes dead citizens, and then we wait for the next strike. There is nothing that government is doing that you can see that it's a carefully planned strategy to deal with a matter like this public health care issue of Lassa fever. What is government doing to prevent it? And what is government doing that in case it afflicts citizens, this is the approach that is going to be taken to save the citizens, alleviate their sufferings and all of that. So my views is that this is, a, this is just the regular thing in Nigeria that those who have been elected to lead us at various levels are not giving due attention to the work that they should be doing because constitutionally, what those who have been elected are to give us is one, welfare, and two, security. And healthcare falls directly under welfare, and you can see that it is being treated with levity. So I'm not also surprised. All right, uh, this Nika is Gule. A uh, let's move away from you know the health concern now and, and uh, look at the Punch newspaper. Just eight days to the uh, deadline for the withdrawal of uh, the former legal, legal tender. The, we still have uh, the ATMs, not just in Lagos, but other parts of the country is dispensing the old notes. What do you make of the entire situation? What I make of this entire situation is that it is only in Nigeria that you have a central bank led by a man who appears not to know his left from his right, and he has been left in office for years, you know, because... A, a, a central bank, like in this case, has come through, has not been prepared for this currency swap, this currency change. Because if they were prepared, then with uh, January 31, which is like you rather say, eight days away from now, you shouldn't expect a single ATM or a bank to dispense the old notes. Everything that would have been happening with a week or so left to the end of the legal tender status of the old notes would have been to mop up every single old note that is circulating in the economy. But to think that, as I speak now, people are still withdrawing the old notes from, from ATMs is to show you the lack of preparedness by the central bank. And we have a central bank that the governor has been accused of all sorts of things. A governor who has jumped into politics, a governor whose monetary policy expertise is called to question over and over again, a governor who decided on this currency uh, change 
in color without even consulting critical stakeholders like the, the Minister of Finance or even the National Assembly. You know, it's, it's, it's a time bomb, and we can only wait to see what is going to happen on January the 31st. But I, 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 my view is that we are not prepared to end the legal tender status of the old notes because the central bank is not prepared. All right, let's deal with the punch. Um, we have uh, the petrol marketers. I mean, it's a confusing situation, and as no no analysts, I'm sure, including yourself, who can really tell exactly what the problem is with fuel supply in the country, exactly to the letter, because it's all shrouded in confusion and secrecy and lack of transparency, and I don't know why that is. But um, the marketers are saying the, the petrol may hit 800 naira per litre, on subsidy removal. That's what the marketers are saying. That's captured on the front page of the Punch newspaper, Nick Aguli. I can, I can tell exactly what is wrong with the fuel supply in Nigeria because I worked in the oil industry for over 20 years and I worked for three of the top four global oil companies, both in Nigeria and abroad. So I can tell the those who are in leadership for free that the only thing that is wrong with the fuel sector in Nigeria is that we have allowed our four refineries to be dead. Our four refineries that have a combined refining capacity of 445,000 barrels of crude oil per day have been allowed to rot, and that is exactly the problem. Once we get these refineries to work, even if it is just one refinery that will get to work, that means we can domestically here in Nigeria refine crude, not just uh, 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 crude oil for, pet for petrol, which is the PMS, pre premium motor spirit. We can also get all the other products that come from crude oil, which includes diesel, or the, the AGO, uh, which includes uh, aviation fuel, which includes kerosene, and many of the other products. Yeah, but, but Nick Agule, I, I, I totally people. agree with you, Nick Agule, and I understand where you're coming from. But what I was referring to uh, in, in that intro was um, the current you know, situation, the current scarcity. Of course, the general issues are known, but we have conflicting you know, uh, uh, accounts, conflicting reports, conflicting reasons conflicting promises, conflicting statements from within government and outside government, stakeholders in the sector as well. And everything is just so confusing. I mean, we can go right from the time of the dirty fuel till now. Nobody has been able to come out to tell us really exactly what government, what did happen to hold people accountable, you know, and, and, and all that. You know, and there's a lot of lack of transparency and clarity, accountability in the sector. But, but what the marketers are saying is that as the scarcity has captured in the punch, just with a few lines for you so you understand better, as the scarcity of premium motor spirit, the paper says, um, continued on Sunday, it says oil marketers have stated that the cost of the commodity will cross the 800 naira per litre mark. Once subsidy on PMS is removed, you know, I think yesterday in the papers, uh, uh, NPC was saying they were going to take out subsidy to the uh, increase, sorry, the cost of the of, of PMS. So that's what they're saying. If it's taken away, Nigerians will pay 800 naira per liter. In your opinion, is this correct? Yeah, it's, it's most likely. I mean, if you look at the fact that we're importing 100% of our petroleum product needs. It means that uh, at 800 naira that is being speculated, that is about a dollar. If you look at uh, how much the dollar is attracting in the parallel market. And yes, it's very possible that a liter of petrol can cost a dollar. Um, and then by the time you add the other input costs like shipping and insurance and all of that, is is it? I mean, I I, I think yeah, if we really take off some subsidy and we have to allow Nigerians to pay. For the cost price. Nick, are you there? Can you hear us, please? At the market price of the imported petrol, the 800. Uh, but the, the issue here is that if you ask me that, where is the problem? The problem lies squarely with the NMPC because the NMPC is the only company that is importing petrol into Nigeria today. 
And the NNPC is the one that is unable to import and supply petrol to Nigerians. And I also know the problem of the NNPC. Uh, one of the problems of the NNPC is the war in Ukraine. I have said this thing publicly, that the war in Ukraine is distorting the global supply of crude oil, global supply of petroleum products. Because let's not forget, Russia is a big supplier of crude oil around the world. And there are many countries in the world that have laid embargo on Russian crude oil uh, uh, as a result of the invasion in Ukraine. And refineries around the world are therefore not getting the kind of supplies that they usually get. And that is affecting nations like Nigeria that are wholly dependent on imported petrol from other nations. So uh, that, that is just where you, you want to point your finger. The finger is pointed squarely at the NNPC. They are the cause of this whole thing. The marketers, I believe, if they see petrol, they will sell it because that's what they are in business for. And so what we are experiencing is a supply problem, and that supply problem is resulting from global affairs, the global scarcity of petroleum products as a result of the war in Ukraine. And the NNPC, who should have repaired at least one of the four refineries within the last few years has done nothing and has thrown Nigerians under the bus. And if the if like, like I said in one interview, if we come to a point where global shipping will be shut down in the same way aviation was shut down in the wake of COVID, if global shipping is shut down today and we can no longer import petroleum products into Nigeria. Nigeria is going to shut down. That is the danger we face, that we are unable to even refine a single barrel of crude oil for ourselves, rather depending squarely on what is coming from abroad. And if what is coming from abroad stops, our nation is going to stop. So for those who are going to take the reins of power in 2023, they should just see the danger in what I'm talking about. And the first thing they should do, very first thing, is to fix our refineries. And the way they can fix the refineries is either by fixing it themselves or by leasing them out to reputable refiners around the world or just by selling these refineries outright so that these investors will bring in their money, their expertise, and their technology. Uh, Nick Agule, uh, we're about to you know, move away from off the press now, but just quickly, let's share your thoughts on the electricity concerns raised by Serap. Uh, Serap is suing the president for the hike. And uh, Nigerians are quite not excited, especially with Serap saying, hey, uh, Serap is just a toothless dog. Uh, they keep backing, but nothing happens. Uh, what are your thoughts? As a January, a uh, consumer had, you know, expressed concern and he shared, you know, uh, the increase. As at, you know, January 2022, 4,000 naira for 88.6 units. And for January 2023, uh, you're buying... Uh, 10,000 naira for 95.8 units. Uh, you know, it feels like you seem to be spending more for less. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I have dual residency. So I pay bills in Nigeria and I pay bills in the UK where I also reside. And I can tell Nigerians for free that the current cost of electricity in Nigeria is more than what we pay in the UK for 24-7 power supply. It is the truth. And it will be a shocker to Nigeria, but that is the truth. We are paying way more than people in the UK who have higher uh, income levels, who have uh, uh, more jobs because unemployment in the UK is 5% is, is, uh, or less, uh, are paying less than what we are paying in Nigeria for electricity. And it is a shame. It's a shame because, again, this is one of the things that uh, we, we, we suffer in Nigeria unnecessarily. Nigeria, as we speak today, is one of the largest producers of gas all over the world. And the only thing that the incoming government should do, because we are tired of advising the current government, uh, is to stop the flares of gas in the Niger Delta and pipe that gas into turbines and generate electricity in plenty food to Nigerians. So that by the time the supply of electricity is increased from the 3,000, measly 3,000 megawatts we have today to about 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, then the cost of electricity itself is going to collapse. Because in simple economics, the more the supply of a product, the less the price.
So what Nigerians are suffering is simply because all 200 million of us are scrambling for only 3,000 megawatts of electricity. By global standards, we should be supplying 200,000 megawatts. So even if we get to 50,000 megawatts, this price thing we're talking about now will we, we totally be eliminated. So, so in other words, then, I mean, we, we should just, uh, you know, survive uh, the remaining months before the handover. I mean, we should just continue the price hike and uh, we can't say anything about... Uh, you know, suing. I mean, will suing solve the problem? Does he address the situation? Just, you know, in less than a minute. We have been talking about this to the president, Buhari led government for the past eight years, and nothing has changed. So, to be honest, my advice to Nigeria will be that let's just be dusting our voters' card so that uh, on, on, on 25th of February, which is just next month, we are going to elect a government that is going to do this for us. All right, then. We have to right. go. Nick Agule. Nick, thank you so much for your time. Um, I wish we had time to look at one few good story. I'll just take your thoughts on that very quickly. President Buhari is uh, expected in Lagos to commission uh, some projects, uh, among which are, uh, is rather the Lekki Deep Sea Port. Um, we had the largest uh, vessel as birthed there recently. The MPA said that, which is good news. What are your thoughts on that? It's not all gloom and doom in Nigeria <laughs> today, is it? It's good news. It's good news because when things like this happen, not only is it going to ease the congestion at the port in Apapa, it's going to create humongous jobs. And so it's the better for our economy. And you will discover there, there that uh, there is strong private sector participation to bring it to life. And that is what the next government should put, uh, focus on. That is, we should hand over this economy to the private sector. Whatever we hand over to the private sector, like telecoms, you see how it's going. Yeah? We have more telephones now than we have electricity. So we, we, it's, it's good news for Nigeria, and, and I'll congratulate uh, the government for that. All right, Lee, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, and have a nice day. All right, then, that's the size of our conversation on Off the Press. We will take a break, and when we return, we'll be looking at our first conversation. Uh, we ask that you stay with us. Good morning.